What's up everyone? It's your boy LJ and in this video I'm going to talk about the Titan Rackable Cambered Bar. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe and if you like the video, please make sure to show the thumbs up button some love. So a few weeks back I made a quick video on this Rackable Camber Bar and how it was delivered to me. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. This is the Titan Fitness Rackable Camber Bar. Aside from that delivery experience, I have to say Titan Fitness, I like this bar. <laughs> I, uh, I mentioned in the previous video that they do get a bad rap. I mean it's really hard to like them especially after reading so many bad reviews on like certain products. And especially after having experiences like I did with my delivery experience with this particular bar. But all in all, uh, this bar has been great. Now granted, I've never used a cambered bar before. So this is the first time that I've had a cambered bar. I've been using it for a little bit over a month now. And it's been solid. The price point was $185 uh, plus taxes and whatnot because shipping is free. I paid around $202. It's been great value for the money that I paid. The bar did come with a few dings. Um, I do have pictures on the other video. Aside from that, I mean, it's a cambered bar. It gets the job done. The welds on this thing, they're not terrible. Pretty solid welds. Um, the bar, it's a 16 inch drop. I know I've seen some that say the, the drop is about 14 inches, uh, like the Elite Fitness one, I believe. Believe, possibly the rogue one the bar itself is actually 85 pounds so it is kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> to move from where i have it to when i'm gonna use it and put it into my rack uh, so that i can do squats with it and whatnot i haven't used it for anything other than squats and for that it's been solid so the diameter on the bar is a little wider than your typical straight bar so it does alleviate your shoulders a bit it does take a bit of pressure off the shoulders one thing that i would know it sounds like pretty much most camper bars it doesn't have any knurling. What I have noticed is that some people tend to put like a sports tape around it or whatnot um, to keep it on. I haven't had an issue with this bar as far as like it moving around or sliding around on me um, or falling off uh, when I'm squatting and whatnot. Um, it's been fine even without the knurling. Um, granted, I'm not pushing a ton of weight on it. I think I've had most uh, 245s on each side and maybe like a 10. So not a ton of weight, so maybe that's why it doesn't move so much on me. Another thing that I would know with the camber bar is that you do have more variation as far as where you're gonna place your arms. Um, so if you do have shoulder pain or whatnot, then you could potentially place your arms lower on the bar. So after the first time using the camber bar, I realized that keeping my hand position uh, on the top part, just like I would a straight bar, actually is what I like best. I hated having my arms here. It just, just everything just kind of felt a little bit off and I was, a lot more sore because I was just uh, <laughs> I was just a lot more sore so I just decided you know what um, I feel like I'm straining my back more placing my arms on the side so I just decided to continue with the hand placement on the top of the bar just like I would with the straight bar shoulders do feel a little bit more rested like they don't they don't feel as painful as they do after doing so many straight bar squats and whatnot especially when I'm doing high volume uh, the other thing that I would mention is that you don't need as much weight now it's not because the bar itself weighs 85 pounds but uh, it could be because of the placement of the weights and because of how low they sit. But like I said before, I've only put up to 90 pounds on each side plus like the 10 pound plate. And really I think two plates and a 10 are probably the max that I've done on this thing. I don't know that I can do any more than that. So it's really great, uh, especially for like deload weeks. So you're not having to use as much weight um, and still really get a really great workout um, and feel like you're really pushing yourself. Now the Titan Sight has this rated at a thousand pound capacity. That hasn't been an issue for me. I haven't gotten anywhere near the thousand pound capacity. One of the things that I've come to love about the Kimber Bar is that it is very unforgiving uh, when you're squatting, uh, meaning that if you start to get loose with your form um, or if you start to lose uh, your tightness uh, while you're performing a squat, then it's going to let you know right away. Uh, meaning that the weights are actually gonna start to swing on you. So that's a very easy call out while you're doing squats. If the weight starts to swing on you, then odds are you're starting to lose your form and you're starting to get sloppy on it. You're not keeping as tight. Uh, so it definitely kind of wakes you up a little bit while you're doing a squat. It's a very quick reminder like, hey, tighten up because uh, the weight's starting to swing on you and you're getting sloppy. That's definitely something that I've come to appreciate about this bar. So with the added instability, it does wake you up to some of your leg muscles that you, that you probably weren't even realizing were being used before because it just puts a little bit more emphasis on the stability aspect uh, during the squat. It could be the way the weights are placed on this bar, but 
I personally feel like I get a lot more out of my quads. Like I feel like my quads are on fire after a workout. But of course also my hamstrings and my glutes and all of that, my bottom, like everything's on fire. For me though, again, personally I've noticed that I get a lot more emphasis on my quads um, where my quads are just completely spent after a squat session. So needless to say, if you do front squats with this bar, forget about it. Like you're gonna murder the ish out of your quads. At least like I said, I feel it heavily on my quads um, and I love to murder my legs out on uh, Saturdays uh, with volume squats. So that little change of having the weights lower, like I definitely think that makes a big difference. I actually can't wait to see how this will impact my straight bar squat. Um, and I'll probably jump back on that in about a week or so and see if there's been any uh, difference as far as like how tight I keep during the squat, if my weight has gone up as far as how much I can actually squat during uh, straight bar usage. Uh, but we'll see, I'm actually excited and I can't wait. Again, hands down, would I buy this again? Yes. For the price um, and value aspect of it, it's just hard to beat 185 plus taxes, so around 202 um, since shipping is free. From Rogue, from Elite Fitness, the prices were coming in around 300 or 350 and that's not even including taxes or shipping. Aside from the fact of how this thing got to me, again, go check out that video. Like, I would do it all over again. Uh, definitely has been worth it. I mean, it's just a cool specialty bar to have. I don't know if I'd recommend it for a beginner, uh, someone who's really just getting down their form and whatnot while they're squatting. But hands down, for the price, I would do it again. It doesn't break the bank and it definitely adds some variations to your workouts and whatnot. So if you want to check out a rackable camper bar, I don't think this is such a bad way to go. Thanks again for watching. If you have a minute, go check out my Instagram. It's MyBoyLJ, just like the YouTube channel. I post daily and it's all fitness related-ish. So go check it out. It's my boy, LJ. Thanks again for watching. This is your boy, LJ, and I'll catch you next time.